South by Southwest opening night continues with the premiere of the Amazon series Swarm. Who is excited? Well, you know, I'm from Texas, so it's bittersweet, it's amazing, it's unlike anything else. You know, we've been working on this for a few years now, and we kind of have to be hush-hush about a lot of it, essentially, and now that people can finally see it, and I think people are going to have a good time. It's called Swarm, so when you think about swarms, you think about bees, and they come in hives. Dominique Fishback, who plays Dre, is obsessed or loves over the pop star Nausea. We're just gonna see how far she takes it to, to getting to her famous, her, fav her favorite pop star. There's an idea about who, who it might be about, what it's trying to say about fandom. I think Dre is a one person band on her own mission and she's not representative of any one anyone fandom. She's representative of herself. I feel like communication wise, we're just new to the internet. Like it's still like a new thing and we're still like learning that language. I think it's just gonna make people think like there's better ways to kind of like associate with each other and like treat each other online. You know, when you say something to somebody's face, like if I, if I called you stupid right now, like I have to see it in your eyes. But at the same time, there's still consequences to that as well. So I think some of that will, will shine through. You see a lot of black girl magic. You know, I love my girl Dom. She absolutely killed the role of Dre. Janine is such a force to be reckoned with. She is just so kind, and it's crazy how these incredible, crazy ideas come from her mind. And Donald, you know, with him directing the pilot and just being so much fun to create with and experiment and find myself growing as an actress and, you know, exploring sounds and music together for the show, it, it was just a lot of fun and I'm so grateful to be a part of this incredible cast. I didn't have a lot of, like, direction in trying to develop the character at first. It's a very specific role. I thought that they were gonna be meticulous about it, but they were really like, no, what do you think? And so I came to set with my own ideas, with my own fresh perspective, and then I would do things that were a little bit strange and I would try to get a reaction out of Donald. That's what I was looking for. So when he would be like, oh, that was strange, I like it. I'd be like, cool, so I just kept going from there. We love shows where people have like a really good reason to love something. It's kind of like watching the Netflix show You, and he's like obsessing over a loved one. And then you start to feel bad, you're like, oh, I get it. So I hope people feel for her and love Dre. I mean, Dominique Fishback is an amazing actress. Um, and I, I pray that you guys love my work and and get obsessed with Naja as well. So we all, we all win. I just hope that people watch this show and say, I've never seen anything like this on TV before. We shot everything on film. We're really proud of it. Um, it feels like seven mini movies in three and a half hours in a full limited series. I hope people are left confused. It's so many twists and turns. I love psychological thrillers that way where you can't figure it out, where it's unpredictable. And I'm so excited to be here, so excited to share with everybody, and I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you're entertained. I hope it makes you think, wonder. Janine Neighbors. And Dominique Fishback. <laughs> and Chloe Bailey. Give it up for these three. What an amazing show. What an amazing show. I have questions for each of you, but to start, what was it like seeing your show in front of a room? Well, my, my dad was sitting behind me, so I was listening for his reaction. What were his reactions? I, I, I still don't know. So. Dad, where are you? How'd you like it? Okay, he loved it. Okay, there you go, there you go. <laughs> Were you surprised by any of the reactions during these two uh, episodes? You know, you, you, you work on a show, then you're in an editing room for months and months and months, so you just really never know. This, is, this brings a show to life. Yeah. So, yeah. it's great. Yeah. I want to get to each of you, but I think I have to ask you, Dominique, like, you're either in this role really, really quiet or really, really loud, and I wanted to ask how you did this deep blank stare the whole time. But mm -hmm. what I really want to ask is how did you know how to scream after that first kill? Oh my God. Because oh. like that first scream after you kill him with the salt lamp, yeah. 
<laughs> how do you after know Drake what to channel? Salt lamp, yeah, not sorry. Dominic. After Dre kills him with the salt lamp, how do you know what to channel for that? What are you thinking about when you're doing that? How was it? I really wasn't thinking about anything. Honestly, it was about uh, what happened before. I had my friend Monique Coleman come and be with me on set because I just wanted somebody who knew me to like just be there, just just in case. You know, as actors, we really give ourselves over, and I just wanted to make sure that I was uh, mentally protected. And uh, yeah, that's what I, that's kind of what I channel. Uh, that that day, like we're all so friendly, and and Damson and I are super close. But that day, I did not want to be in the same like green room with them. I kind of wanted. He kept his distance as well. I think we both kind of knew that we wanted to service the story in that way. Did you prepare for this role in a really different manner than you have prepared for other roles? Yes, normally for my characters, I journal as them. I'm very psychological to the approach, but. Uh, Dre on paper, psychologically, there's really no thread for her, so I didn't want to try to force anything, and I just decided that I wanted to be present. One of the things that Janine and Donald said a lot, which was uh, that she was emotionally stunted. So I would try to be like, is she this, is she this? And they'd be like, no, she's, she's none of those things. It was just emotionally stunted, so I decided that I would be present, and the way she kind of like looks around is her computing how to respond in the moment. So I think she's searching her memory bank to find the proper answer for the moment, for the question that she's asked. So I think a lot of times she mimics Marissa. And so if somebody's like, oh, uh, Dre, or Marissa, how are you? And Marissa's like, girl, I'm good. So they'll be like, Dre, how are you? Girl, I'm good. She'll do it the same exact way. So I just kind of stay present and, and watch and let her kind of try to find the answers. I noticed that, because it felt like even when you were just looking, there were all these wheels turning behind Dre's eyes. Yeah. It was amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Chloe. Hi. Congratulations. Thank you. Hi, everybody. That was amazing. <laughs> you yourself are a pop star. Has making this show and watching this show now made you think any differently about your relationship with your fans? It didn't. What drew... <laughs> it didn't, to be honest. What really drew me to wanting to play Marissa, yeah. I read the first episode and I was immediately drawn to her because on the outside she seems like a big ball of sunshine and she's so optimistic about life and, you know, it seems that she's the one lifting the weight between her and Dre. But in actuality, she was really battling her own inner demons. And I related a lot to that. And I think a lot of us can relate to that. We're on the outside, we show ourselves as we have it all together. And on the inside, we're slowly crumbling. So it's like you see how Marissa internalizes her pain, she harms herself. And how Dre internalizes her pain, she harms others. So it's like they have this weird trauma bond and mm. the sisterhood and how much they love each other. It's almost to an, obs like, to an obsessive point, but it's so strong that nothing can really break it. And it's like, till death do them part. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our interview is going to run Tuesday. But one of the things we talked about and one of the things I noticed you know, the first two episodes are pretty gory. And I asked you in our chat, are you afraid that people will turn it off? Is it too much? And you said to me, well, people watch Charles Manson shows. They watch Jeffrey Dahmer shows. And then we talked about how I don't think either of us have ever seen a black woman serial killer on screen ever. Right. Oh, who's snapping for that? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, have you? Have any of you? No. no. What's that about? I, I think as Americans, we're so conditioned to seeing white men be angry and giving them the space for, or just giving them the space for violence on, on film yeah. and, and then TV. giving them Emmys and Oscars for it. Yeah, yeah. you know, Dahmer is, it's a good show. It's, you know, it's, it's one of the biggest shows that Netflix has ever done, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, when Donald pitched this idea to me, he, also lives on Twitter. This is why everyone needs to tweet at him. Remember why I told you? Um, and there was a, a black woman that he follows on, on Twitter who um, he just loves her tweets. And she was like, why does every black woman on TV have to be like a therapist or a funny best friend or someone looking for love or, you know, um, you know, a teacher, like, we can be, we can be crazy, we can be serial killers, too. Yeah. 
And uh, and the rest is is swarm, guys. The rest is swarm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This show is also about sisterhood and about the bond that you touched on. The two of you managed to do something in your roles that feels so incredibly deep and authentic. And I know I asked you about how you prepare, but how did the two of you prepare to perform this sisterhood that is so deep and so visceral? To be honest, the synergy between us was really magical and uh -huh. intense. And I remember our schedules were so busy before we started shooting, and we kept trying to hang out and like cook together. What was and, the first like, plan? Go get our out. nails yeah. done. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we tried like three different times, but it never worked. And I remember we saw each other in person for the first time, and it just felt so right. Mm. And I couldn't have asked for a better scene partner. And you know, being on set for two weeks with Dominique and Damson, it was it was like the best two weeks of my life. And you know, the scene where we have the huge argument scene, when we would read it on paper and when we were at Donald's house going over it, it didn't feel that intense as we were reading through it, but something happened when we were on set in that room and we both were so shaken up that after the scene, we were like in the dark room crying for like 40 minutes. Oh. And we uncontrollably, and it was almost like we were releasing anything that we kind of kept pent up inside. What was it that you were releasing for both of you? I, I don't know. I think uh, I think both Dre and Mar Marissa are misunderstood. Mm -hmm. I think I probably felt that yeah. in my life. And this particular argument, it was literally her her heart breaking. You know, I think we and and also I think we were probably coming closer to the end of filming yeah. together. So I think that that probably played a big part in it. Yeah. 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 It felt like we were finding our wings. I love it. You know, Marissa and Dre both were. It was like the beginning of them stepping out. Yeah. Yeah. I finished the show last week, and I kept thinking about Dre. Mm. And I kept thinking about wanting to do something to help her. And mm. without giving away the rest of the show, because you got to watch the rest of the show, I do want to say, like, what do y'all hope for Dre now? <laughs> I hope Dre finds inner peace. Same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, I, I hope that Dre finds uh, freedom. And I mean that in the sense that she's obviously dealing with a lot of demons inside and those are the things that's controlling mm -hmm. every move that she makes. And if, if, she had, if she had freedom, I don't know that she would have gone that far. Like, yeah, you know, if she had, if yeah. she really, if you really, if she really had it, because freedom is in the mind. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. No, do I really have to answer <laughs> that question? You do. You do. Um, I think I, I just hope that, I, I hope for Dre that she lives on in some way, right? Um, hmm. Whether it be in a good way or the way she's living now, I just want her to exist because. Oh. She, you know, people like her do exist in the world. Yeah. And she happens to be a black woman who exists in the world. So that's kind of part of the point of the story as well. So. Yeah. I just wanted to get to a Nyjah concert myself. I mean, I mean that too. <laughs> I think it would fix everything, personally. <laughs> this show left me with a lot of questions. And like questions that I'm still thinking about and mulling over. And I think y'all made this show to make viewers ask a lot of questions of themselves, of their role in the culture. What is the one question you most hope viewers leave this show asking themselves? Okay, I guess yeah. I should. Um, <laughs> how did they get this crazy show greenlit? That? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, tell you, right. I mean, I'll tell you what it made me ask myself. I finished the show and then I went back through all my tweets that mentioned a pop star and considered if I was too mean as a fan. Mm. I don't know, mm. I think like mm -hmm. a lot of people will see themselves in the toxic standing that is present in the show. Is there any kind of message you're trying to send to folks about that besides just like chill the hell out? I don't, I, I don't think that as a brand, Donald and I believe in messages. Okay. I think it's, it just exists in the world and people can interpret it the way that they want to. And that's what our hope is. We hope that people just talk about it and it inspires them in some way to create 
weird punk shit. Yeah. Or yeah. to talk to other people about the weird punk thing that they just saw and be like, what was that? Yeah. Um, so that, that's, that's, that's the hope for yeah. me at least. Yeah. What do you all anticipate the reaction to this show to be on social media in the world? Because it hits on stuff that is so close to real life and real things that have happened. What do you expect? How are you preparing for it? Because all the tweets aren't just going to go to Donald Glover. Oh, <laughs> Lord. <laughs> um, honestly, I, I kind of tried to put that aspect out of my mind. Yeah. I mean, especially when, when filming it, when I thought about doing this, this project, uh, they told us that they wanted us to watch this movie called The Piano Teacher. And it's a French film. And uh, it starts off and it's like, all, like a study of this character through the eyes. And then they... <laughs> And then uh, it takes a masochistic turn. And I'm like, oh, why do they want me to watch this? And it really made me consider what kind of artist I wanted to be and if I was brave. And I didn't know if I was brave enough to do something like that. And I talked to Donald and Janine, and they was like, oh, it's not that, but it's this. And so I was like, okay, yeah, I want to do that. And as, as it started getting closer, I started to be like, uh, think, do I want to do this? I'm kind of afraid. And then I thought about the different artists who did things that they were afraid of. And I had to journal and pray. I, and I, I journaled and asked myself what gave me pause and why. And uh, if I could identify that the pause was in me, then I could address it. But if it was because of perception and what somebody else was gonna think or there feel, then I wasn't doing a service to my own artistry, to the gift that God gave me That's and the reason that I'm here. So uh, yes, it's very nerve wracking to hear what people have to say, but I'm, I'm very proud that I was brave to try something different. Yes, yes, yes. I love that. We're gonna get to audience questions. That was beautiful. But I got one last question for you. Okay. What did Donald say when he pitched you the show and what was your first reaction? I mean, he literally was like, hey, do you have a moment? And I was like, am I being fired? <laughs> and he was like, no, I have an idea. And I said, okay. And it, this was COVID, so we all thought we were gonna die. Full stop. Yeah. Um, and he, he basically said, I, I want you to write the first show after Atlanta, and I want it to be about a black woman who's obsessed with a pop star. And I said, hell yeah, let's there do it. There you go. The rest is history. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's take some audience questions. We'll take two. There's two mics up here. As you come to the mic to ask your questions, remember questions end in question marks and you only get one. <laughs> Who wants to ask? I'm first, hi. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so uh, before watching the series, uh, some of my other friends, my black friends, we were talking about if we actually watch a lot of horror, because I know it's like marketed a lot as a horror movie, and we're like, no, we don't really like horror. So what was it like for you guys to create like horror through a black female's lens, especially, but even just like a black American's lens, you know? I was happy that I didn't have to be the one to do the killing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but I've always been such a huge fan of psychological thrillers and things that kind of make my mind race and stories that are unpredictable. And, you know, to kind of piggyback off of what Dom said, you never really see a black female in that role or that type of position. So, you know, being on set with all of these incredible black women, you know, Janine and Dom and even Malia and all of us on set, it was, it was like we were all supporting each other through the art. And, you know, Marissa bows out gracefully and I'm just really so proud of Dom because I know it was really hard for her and she pulled it off so beautifully. And it's hard for an actress to really expand the way she did and you guys will see throughout all of the episodes, but it was truly magical to witness. My name is Mauricio, shout out Chloe. You look beautiful. Thank you. Anyways, uh, this is for Dom actually. <laughs> I'm personally a, student, a filmmaker as well, and I'm directing a psychological thriller. So I'm curious, what kind of techniques can I, what kind of advice can I give to my actors uh, to be able to reach in that inner uh, psychotic mentality? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, 
honestly, I, I appreciate and respect Donald and, and Janine for uh, their approach with this character. This show was so specific that I thought they would be really meticulous about everything. And when I was like, oh, so is she this? Is she this? They were like, no, she's none of that. So I go to the set like, I don't know what they want from them, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I go and I just, I, I present whoever I'm going to be in the present. And then they took what I presented and then gave direction on that. And so it really was a collaboration. So I would, I would say trust. And I would, I would say to, for them to be present because the circumstances is what's going to happen, right? So they don't have to force themselves. I don't have to force Dre to be a serial killer. She just is. So that's the circumstance. So however true she's going to be about whatever, or however true your, your actors are going to be or your characters are going to be about whatever they care about, just let them focus on whatever they care about. And the other stuff will take care of itself, I think. All right. Perfect. Thank you so yes. much. I want the Dominique Fishback Masterclass. Oh, I'll Chloe, Thank Chloe you. give me a call whenever you, whenever you see okay, me. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Uh, all right, I think we're at time. I want to thank all of you for being here. If you want to hear more of my chat with Janine Neighbors, it's in Podcast Feeds Tuesday. Thanks to Chloe Bailey and Dominique Fishback and Janine Neighbors. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And that is a wrap on day one of South by Southwest 2023. Opening night, huge success, but we are just getting started and the best is yet to come. So make sure you check back for a whole lot more coverage here in Austin, Texas for South by Southwest 2023.